Hi friends, welcome back to What the Science. Do you remember in our last video we told you that if only Poe knew genetics, he would have figured out that the goose is not his actual father. We also told you that DNA is made up of a pentose sugar known as ribose and four nitrogenous bases A, T, G and C. The sugar and the base together form a nucleoside and in the presence of a phosphate they become a nucleotide. DNA is nothing but a polymer of nucleotides. For example, in this case you can see that there is a 5' end which was the first nucleotide and a 3' end which is the end where new nucleotides get added. And DNA is always read from the 5' end to the 3' end. Here it is T-A-C-G. So nobody knew what DNA looked like. But everyone believed that if only they knew the structure of DNA, they would understand the molecular basis of genetics and life. There was an unspoken race between scientists to solve the structure of DNA. We should certainly discuss Rosalind Franklin's X-ray crystallography experiments because she produced one of the first images of DNA. But that was not it. Here enter the new players in the race, James Watson and Francis Crick. Do you remember these two smart guys? These two men, with a little help from Franklin's co-worker, Morris Wilkins, got their hands on Franklin's data and solved the structure of DNA. So based on Rosalind Franklin's data, Francis Crick and James Watson built up the model of DNA. Just how you would build up the models from Lego bricks using metallic plates and balls and straws and pipes they built up the model of DNA and it turned out to be a double helix. So what exactly was Watson and Craig's DNA double helix model like? So they said that the two strands of the helix are connected by hydrogen bonds. A's are always paired with T's and C's are always paired with G's which is consistent with and accounts for Chargaff's rule. Most DNA double helices are right-handed. What do you mean by right-handed helices? So by right-handed helices, what they meant was if you are to hold your right hand out with your thumb pointing up and your fingers curling, then the thumb would represent the axis of the helix and the fingers would represent the base sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA double-stranded double helix. For the work on DNA double helix, Watson, Crick and Wilkins received a Nobel Prize in 1962. Followed by the discovery, people understood the functioning of genes better and yielded groundbreaking insights into the genetic code and protein synthesis. Major current advances in science, namely genetic fingerprinting and modern forensics, the mapping of the human genome and the promise yet unfulfilled of gene therapy all have their origins in Watson and Crick's inspired work. The double helix has not only reshaped biology, but it has also become a cultural icon represented in sculpture, visual art, jewelry and toys. We hope you have become a huge fan of DNA. We recommend you to go through the list of books that are mentioned below. We shall meet you in the next video. 